Hi, my name's Emma Purdy, and today I'd like to introduce you to my underwater world. When I was about six months old, my mom enrolled me and her into water babies class. This was my first swim lesson. My mom says that I actually cried a lot during that class, but obviously it didn't scar me for life, because now I'm a total water fanatic. My mom, when I was little, my mom took me to the pool and the lake a lot. I spent endless hours goofing around in the water. When it was time to go home, I would cry because I didn't want to get out. My teeth would be chattering and I'd have goosebumps all over my body, but I would insist that I was perfectly warm and didn't want to leave. My parents are really big on hiking and we've hiked to a lot of different lakes and rivers over the years. I'm not really sure why, but early on, I made it my mission to swim in every lake, river, pond, and puddle that I could. I bring my bathing suit almost everywhere, just in case I need it. I don't have an estimate of how many lakes I've swam in, but let's just say it's a lot. That makes me an expert on what's at the bottom of a lake or river. <laughs> I've seen clam shells. The clams, by the way, are an invasive species and not supposed to be there. Railroad spikes, because some lakes near railroads. A car tire. I'm not really sure how it got to the bottom, but I assume someone threw it in. Shoelaces. A pair of pants. Not the prettiest sight when they've been under the water for a while. <laughs> Trust me. Band-aids, which are very common and gross. Hair ties that seem like they're always multiplying. Beer cans, shoes, sunglasses. Unfortunately, they're usually scratched or broken, so you can't wear them. Golf balls, there's a great place to go underwater golf ball hunting at the Edgewood Golf Course. You can pick up hundreds of balls, but the water's cold, so you've got to be tough. Fishing lines, lures, and hooks, rusty nails, and rotten wood, these weird clear blobs that look like jellyfish, and of course, fish, crawdads, and rocks, which are all supposed to be at the bottom of a lake or river. I have swam in lakes that are a six-hour hike away from civilization and have still found thrown away junk in the water. Even though I believe that it's terrible that people trash our lakes and rivers, this isn't a talk about pollution. It's about my underwater world. <laughs> when I'm in the water, I feel like I'm in control. The only reason I'm able to investigate the bottoms of those lakes and rivers is because I'm a strong swimmer. I don't know where I'd be or what I'd do if I weren't a swimmer. Swimming is my way into the underwater world that some people never get to see. Being in the water is never boring for me because I always find something fun to, fun to do, like diving down as deep as I can go or searching for underwater surprises, otherwise known as junk or trash. Even though the things I find are usually junk, I like and try to find the weirdest things I can. Water can be mysterious and scary at times too because as I go down, the water gets colder and colder and I lose more and more air. When I hit the bottom, I realize that I've got a limited amount of time before I have to go back up. Water can play tricks on you too. Sometimes when I'm in the water, it's so murky that I can't see what's in front of me. The most mysterious place in my underwater world is the deep, murky, dark water of a small lake called Sand Pond. One time I was scanning the bottom of Sand Pond, searching for polywogs, when something slimy brushed up against my lake. My first thought was that it was a jellyfish, which was weird, because jellyfish don't live in a high mountain lake. I decided to find out what this thing was that was freaking me out, so I dove down pulled a, and pulled a strip of it up to the surface. It turned out to pre, be a pretty gross looking plant, totally harmless. At that point, I felt pretty ridiculous, so I looked around to see if anybody was watching me. No one was, so I was in the clear. The sad thing is, some people don't get to have all those fun experiences like the one I just told you. For example, my Grandma Marge. Grandma Marge grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, and even lived on the beach for a short period of time. But she never learned how to swim. All these years she's watched, as other people have had fun in the water, but she never did. When my uncle got married in Hawaii, this is way before I was born, they all went snorkeling. My grandma really wanted to go too, so she put on her life jacket and mask and was ready to get in the water, but couldn't let go of the boat ladder because she was so scared. She missed out on discovering the amazing underwater world of Hawaii. I've been lucky enough to go to Hawaii myself and do a lot of snorkeling. I don't just float at the top of the water, I like to see the underwater world from every angle. I've seen sea turtles, crazy fish, seashells, which are my favorite thing to find, sea urchins, which I'm always careful not to touch, starfish, 
coral and lots of beautiful colors. Jellyfish, they freak me out, as you might remember from my sand pond story. Eels, which seem to jump out at you at the weirdest times, and dolphins, which are amazing and beautiful. I was in Hawaii during the 2011 tsunami that hit Japan. The tsunami wave bounced all the way from Japan and hit Hawaii and caused a lot of damage where we were staying in the Kona area. The next day, we had to stay out of the ocean, but the day after that, we went back out snorkeling. There was nothing to see. All the fish were gone. It seemed like my underwater world was deserted. It was a strange experience because everything I'm used to seeing was gone, vanished. Day after day, more and more sea life started to appear. I think they all just got scared when the tsunami hit and went out to sea to, and went out to, sea to hide until it was safe to come home. That was three years ago, and even though I haven't been back to Hawaii since, I've had a lot of other amazing underwater world experiences. I swim almost every day in a pool, but I'm always looking forward to my next underwater world experience. I'd like to leave you with the question, what does your underwater world look like? Maybe it doesn't even have to be underwater. Thank you. Mm. Mm.